What is up guys, back in the shop and another one of those projects where I wasn't really gonna make a YouTube video because this channel is a fake YouTube channel in the beginning, uh, but I bought a GoLabs i200 model off of Amazon about a year ago. And this has been pretty neat. It's a 256 watt hour, uh, 80,000 milliamp hour lithium iron battery. So in this battery, there's lith lithium iron cells. Uh, and for the money at the time, this was just a killer buy. So I, I picked it up. I think I paid 127 or $135. It was something under $140 shipped to my door from Amazon. Uh, you can still get this, this unit on Amazon, but the price has gone up a little bit. Watch the sales though. They still come down around 150 bucks. Anyway, uh, that's not the point of today's video. Today's video is actually, as you can see, it is splayed open in front of me. And the problem is uh, I've only had it for a year and I've used it probably less than three pack cycles, essentially. I would use it down to about 20% uh, left in the battery, bring it home, uh, charge it up, and then take it out on my next little outing. Well, what I did uh, the other night was get one of those 12-volt uh, rechargeable coolers and I plugged it into this. And I wanted to see how long that cooler would run on this battery pack so that when I take it in the truck, I wouldn't have to keep it plugged in while I was parked and depleting the, the truck battery. So plugged it in, ran my non-scientific test, uh, and found out that it would run for close to seven or eight hours. Also not the point of this video, but pretty good. Eight hours was enough for me, at least, to get from point A to point B. I could charge this up once I stopped at the hotel or, or the campground or whatever it was, and then we could be ready to travel the next day. What happened, though, is it depleted this pack completely, right? Uh, it was plugged into the 12 volt output on the i200. Uh, and when this uh, pack gets down to a critical level where the battery has depleted, of course, the battery management system cuts off power to the pack. And so the pack powered down, that was fine. I got my uh, result for the cooler. Uh, the problem was when I recharged the pack the next day, uh, everything worked. But when I pushed the AC button uh, to enable the 220 volt ports on the front of this, uh, it would stay turned on for approximately five or six seconds, and then I would get an EO3, which is essentially a pack voltage error. I got to thinking about this uh, because there's no, definitely nothing wrong with the battery. The battery hasn't been charged that many times, uh, and started to think that that was kind of concerning. And I read more uh, reviews that people had said, yep, I get EO3, uh, it's a pack voltage error. Uh, the manufacturers suggested uh, via support uh, that you plug this thing in, uh, and let it charge from zero to 100% on its built-in or its charger, an AC-DC adapter. It's three amps at 14.6 uh, volts. So I did that uh, and it didn't come back to life. And so I started thinking that there was something inside here uh, that had thrown a flag essentially that said, nope, there's not enough pack voltage. Don't allow the AC uh, circuit to come on until the pack is recharged uh, that wasn't getting cleared. And, and certainly, uh, that's annoying because I did deplete the pack down to the point where the only thing that it would run was the three watt light and the light itself would run for only a few seconds and then it would turn off too. So I depleted it down as far as I could do uh, without taking it apart. Essentially without disassembling the pack, I had done everything I could from the front panel uh, to deplete this, to try to get that to clear a flag. I am 100% certain now that these have a bug in the system, in the BMS system, uh, that keeps them from allowing the AC board uh, to know that it can repower after you've fully depleted it. And that's why there's so many reviews on Amazon about the GoLabs i200 that say EO3 error. So anyway, long story short, you've got the preamble here. You can see I've got it taken apart. I've got a stick to point at it with, and I've got the lithium iron battery on a piece of non-conductive wood here. Uh, so you guys can check this out. And I'm gonna take you inside and show you what you need to do. If you have one of these, it's out of warranty and you, you can't get any support from the manufacturer because it can be fixed. I, I took it apart. It is a ton of screws. It's kind of a pain in the ass, no doubt. Uh, but if you have some perseverance and you have a little bit of time and an understanding of what is going on inside of this thing, because you can absolutely hurt yourself if you don't, don't take it apart if you're not familiar with what's going on here. Uh, you can you can absolutely make these things work again. Uh, it is a bug in the design of this system. Uh, if you keep your pack charged to 20% uh, and you never accidentally walk away and let it fully deplete, I think you could probably use this successfully for all 2000 cycles or whatever these LifePo 4 batteries are rated to. But if you let it deplete once, I suspect you're gonna come into this EO3 error. Uh, and again, 
cross-reference the reviews on Amazon. I'm not the only one that's run into this. Uh, I just think that it's not possible to fix it without cracking the case and, and your normal consumer isn't gonna crack the case. So here we are, uh, pulled it apart. Let's take a look inside, see what you gotta do to get this thing functioning again. Before we get into it, let's see how you take it apart. It's really not too bad, but you do have to do a few things that are semi-destructive. So uh, there are two trim pieces on the front. These guys uh, are very easy to remove. Essentially they pop in. So if you start from the edge uh, over here and then just grab with a pry tool, uh, you'll get that started and then these will pop right out. So this very non-destructive, you actually don't need to take out the two front ones at all. In fact, those are just decorative. Uh, if you got the orange one, you'll know why the orange one has some little accent pieces. So don't bother taking the front ones out, which you're taking this thing apart to fix it. Uh, what you do need to do, however, is to take off these two side grills. So these grills are held on by four uh, small screws. Uh, they're kind of like a Torx or a star style bit. Uh, so small one of those, four of those come off, and then that'll reveal this dust screen. Now what you'd see here is I had to uh, sever the dust screen. I basically just took a razor blade and cut right down the seam. Uh, that way when the cover goes back on, we'll still have our dust protection to some extent. Uh, it's a bummer that you have to cut this, but it, there's no way to remove with the adhesive the way it is. There are also two screws for the handle here. You need to take the back side screw out. The other screw can stay in, the front one can stay in. Uh, the same thing on the light side, uh, you'll take those four screws out for the cover. Uh, you'll se uh, sever the screen here, and then you'll need to take out that, again, back screw uh, so that this back part can remove. Now the other screws that are hidden are under these little trim pieces here. You'll see one and one. So what you need to do is just like I showed you on the front, you pry from the side first and then you can lift up the lift up the back two tabs. The only ones with clips are the back two ones. So you go like that and that's how you would remove them. Just reverse the process. Uh, there are a couple other hidden screws here. So under the back sticker, which tells you all the uses for this, uh, it says something to the effect of electronic application, or I'm sorry, electronic rather applications. Uh, you need to peel that off. And underneath that, there are two uh, Phillips screws. Uh, I actually was able to peel it off with the sticky remaining. So we'll stick it back on, good as new. And then underneath here, uh, when you remove the two feet on the bottom, big rubber silicone feet, uh, there are two Phillips screws. Now, what I learned after I've taken it apart, so I damaged mine, you don't have to, is you only need to take out half of this. So when you remove this, only remove the half that is facing towards the back. Uh, that will allow you to take this screw out and this screw out and you should be able to take the whole back panel off uh, and leave these two screws intact. And that'll allow you to at least have some of your feet ad adhesive uh, stay intact when you take it apart. So just take the, the two back ones out. Now, once you've done all the things that we just talked about, so two screws, two screws, two screws, screw, screw, and all of the panels, this lifts right off. There's actually no clips or anything. It's a really straightforward lift. Uh, if you have a little pry tool, you can stick it under there just to get your fingernail started, but it's very easy to take off once you've gotten all of the screws. So that's where all the hidden screws are on the GoLabs i200. Now let's look at the inside. All right, bringing you around back now. So I just laid it down and you can see again, I do have the pack isolated from my steel bench um, just so it doesn't uh, accidentally short anything out. And I do have uh, four screws taken out of this inverter section so that you can actually lift it out. It is connected to the plastic housing by uh, two fan leads. They're just a little 12 volt fan uh, that connects to the board. That can't be removed, uh, so I have not fooled with it. But to do any sort of reset on this, you can't simply disconnect the two uh, power plugs here. Uh, so these are XT60s, I think. Yeah, they're XT60 power plugs, very standard plugs. I opened it initially, and you can access both these plugs just by taking the back off of this unit here. Uh, if you just take those two things off, it will not fix the problem. I put it back together, it's still arrow 03. So what you need to do is disconnect these first to get the battery disconnected from the actual uh, board here. So let me do that. All right, I got you up on the stand now. So let's disconnect the LiPo battery from the actual board first. There are XT60 connectors here. Uh, they're pretty tight fit, uh, of course, because they are low resistance connectors, so two uh, of those that you need to disconnect immediately. That gets this battery uh, mainly disconnected. However, there is a battery management lead that feeds up into the main front board here. To get this out, uh, there are two screws here that are very easily accessible. Then down behind the inverter section, there are two more screws that you need to reach down into the unit past that 
to get. And then there are two that are on top that fasten the BMS, or I'm sorry, the LifePo 4 and the inverter section together. So there's six total screws to get this whole module out. Uh, the hardest ones to find are the ones that are deep down in here. So make sure you go past the inverter section down in and remove those. Once you've done that, you can pull all these pieces out. These do have lids on them. Uh, as you can see, they're snap fit lids. So what you need is a, a little pry tool. Uh, you basically stick under your pry tool and start to work it up. And once you've got three of them up, you can start to lift it. And as soon as you get the two sides up, the whole thing will just come right off. And the same stands true for the inverter. So that's just how you get it apart. To get this disconnected here, the BMS part, you need to take this out. Now this gets the whole lithium pack out of the way and you can actually see uh, that lithium pack. I'm not going to pull it out. Uh, if you've looked at any of the information on this, it's double-sided stick down into this particular tray, so I'm not even going to fool with that. Uh, you can see the configuration of cells here. Uh, and then if you look really closely, I'm going to try to get you guys in there so you can see. There you go. IFR 18650. 2000 milliamp. All right, so once you've got your lithium iron pack disconnected from the battery, uh, you're basically going to be able to see uh, kind of the layout here. So we've got 10 cells and there's four across here. So we've got 40 of those cells uh, all hooked up in here uh, to make the 12.8 volts that you need for the pack to run. Uh, these are the two main feeds. This one uh, feeds the uh, this one feeds the 12 volt section and the USBs. Uh, this one feeds uh, the inverter. And actually, when it's packed together, this actually tucks up in this so that it holds it out of the way. So you'll see that when you take yours apart. Like I said now, uh, you want to take this data lead off of the main board. It is connected inside the main board here. Uh, and you want to remove that from here. And then underneath your inverter, you're actually going to find uh, that there's another data connection that needs to be removed. Uh, and that'll essentially allow you to look at this inverter. All right, I want to pause the video here for just a minute. I'm geeking out and taking this apart because it's my first time doing it. Uh, but if you are just here to fix your EO3 issue, I've just shown you what you need to do. You need to disconnect those two XT60 connectors, one to the inverter and one that leads into the main 12 volt for the board. And then you need to disconnect the BMS lead, which I just showed you, and the inverter data lead, those two uh, black wires that feed up into the board for data. Once you've disconnected the XT60s and the data leads, uh, leave them disconnected for just a couple of minutes, and then uh, you can reassemble your pack. I just wanted to pause here and call that out. The rest of this is simply me geeking out by tearing into this thing and trying to figure out what other things are interesting about it. Thanks a lot, guys. Now, the reason I'm pulling the inverter out, uh, you don't necessarily need to take it out of this case once you've disconnected the power and the data uh, connections. The reason I'm taking it out is to show you that there's actually another failure mode that could happen uh, depending on how you load this. There is a 35 amp uh, fuse here. It's one of the micro uh, auto fuses. Uh, essentially, uh, you can get a replacement there and then it is soldered into the board. So if it is to blow, uh, it's a 35 amp uh, micro fuse. Uh, that is soldered in there. So that is something that could also cause a failure to your AC output. Uh, I'm not sure it would manifest itself, however, as an EO3 error. So I just wanted to point that out too while we're in here. Uh, hopefully this helps somebody uh, that thought their unit was a piece of junk. Uh, they can be fixed. They do have a pretty fatal flaw in that every time you do this, I suspect that you're going to have that same EO3 error that would require uh, you to fully disconnect everything to get it to come back. And, and so that's not necessarily great, but I'm glad that we were able to salvage it before we... Uh, uh, threw it into the junk pile. So, all right, guys, have a great one. Mm -hmm.